sure that works. Let's see here. How would I go about? Ooh. Oh my goodness, I think I've been at this too long. <laughs> oh, <laughs> are you seriously still awake again? <sighs> yes, yes, happy Christmas. You better not be making a tradition out of this. Ugh, honestly, what am I going to do with you? All right, yes, I know, you're not tired. Get on the bed, you'll feel tired eventually. I don't know why you think my bed is so comfortable. It, it really isn't. It's very, very uncomfortable, actually. I still wake up with, like, massive back cramps. Oh, well. So, have you been having fun today? Yes, I'm sorry, the day just started. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, honestly. All right, all right. Give me a minute. I need to clear up some things here and I'll talk to you a bit more, okay? All right. You just, I don't know, try to get some sleep, please. <laughs> Goodness me. Hmm? What am I working on? <laughs> well, the same thing I'm always working on, it seems like. Well, a story. It's a fun story, you know, about wizards and warriors coming together to fight a great evil, but I'm not sure. I'm feeling kind of bleh by it all. <laughs> Maybe I just need to take a break. Ah, <sighs> You know, there's a whole bunch of movies I've been meaning to sit down and watch. A bunch of video games I've been meaning to play as well. Hey. Maybe that's something you and I can do together. We can just sit back and play a whole bunch of video games. Why don't we do that this Christmas? Just sit back, play video games, and open presents. Oh, and by the way, I've been meaning to give you something. Give me a sec. There it is. I didn't have time to wrap it or anything, so sorry about that, kiddo. Yeah, go on. Have a look. I know it's not much, but I don't know, I just wanted to send you something. I feel like I haven't been spending a lot of time with you recently, and it's not because I don't want to, it's because I I struggle with time management. <laughs> and whenever I get so fully invested in something, I usually lose sight of everything else. So, I'm sorry. This is for you. And I want to spend a lot more time with you. And that's going to be my New Year's resolution. That I'll spend more time with you. Or I'll just, I don't know, time management, all that stuff. <laughs> and then again, maybe spending time working on time management will take away from time that I could be spending with you, so... Who knows? Maybe I'm just caught between a rock and a hard place, huh? 
I'm glad you like the card. <sighs> yeah, let me see. I'll put this on the mantle later. And I'm sure your mother will have a few words. Okay, I am just about done. Right, so, how about I read you a story? Hmm? <laughs> All right. I'm excited to share with you a few different stories, actually. Let me think. What story? I've got a few books here. Uh, what would you like to hear? Mm -hmm. you, <laughs> you want me to continue? <sighs> well, it has been a while. Let me, let me pull it up here, actually. That way I can read it to you a little bit easier. Uh, let's do this here. There we go. All right. Where did I leave off on in that story? It's been so long. <laughs> Let's see. Ah, okay. I think I know where I left off. Let me look this up. Here we go. I believe we last left off on chapter 12. Ah. Yes, here we are. All right, here we go. Forgive me if I make any mistakes. It's been a little while, especially reading like this. All right, here we go. <laughs> you comfy? All right, let's begin. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, Chapter 12. A loud clatter of gunk music flooded through the heart of Gold Cabin as Zaphod searched the sub-ether radio wavebands for news of himself. The machine was rather difficult to operate. For years, radios had been operated by means of pressing buttons and turning dials. Then, as the technology became more sophisticated, the controls were made touch-sensitive. Hang on. Touch-sensitive U. That's an interesting phrase. Touch sensitive you merely had to... Oh, okay, hang on. I think I'm reading this wrong. Then, as the technology became more sophisticated, the techno... Oh, I do this every single time I read this. Then, as the technology became more sophisticated, the controls were made touch sensitive. You merely had to brush the panels with your fingers. Now, all you had to do was wave your hand in the general direction of the components and hope. It saved a lot of muscular expenditure, of course, but meant that you had to sit infuriatingly still if you wanted to keep listening to the same program. Zaphod waved a hand, and the channel switched again. More gunk music, but this time it was a background to a news announcement. The news was always heavily edited to fit the rhythms of the music. And news brought to you here on the sub-ether waveband, broadcasting around the galaxy around the clock, squawked a voice, and we'll be saying a big hello to all intelligent life forms everywhere. To... Uh, bleh, <clears throat> and to end... And to end... Oh, goodness. I am not... This is... It is late. <laughs> and to everyone else out there, the secret to the big... To the big? The secret to the bang the rocks together, guys. Oh, my goodness. I am really not good at this tonight. Do you, are you sure you want me to keep going? <laughs> all right, all right. I'll keep going. Here we go. <clears throat> and, of course, the big news story tonight is the sensational theft of the new improbability drive prototype ship by none other than Galactic President Zaphod Beeblebrox. And the question everyone's asking is, has the Big Z finally flipped? Beeblebrox, the man who invented the pan-galactic gargle blaster, an ex-confidence trickster, once described by Eccentrica Galumbits as the best bang since the big one, and recently de devoted and recently voted the worst-dressed sentient being in the known universe. For the seventh time, has he got an answer this time? We asked his private brain care specialist, Gag Halfrunt. The music swirled and dived for a moment. Another voice broke in, presumably Halfrunt. He said, 
Well, Zaphod's just this guy, you know? I think it's supposed to be a foreign voice. Well, Zaphod's just this guy, you know? Oh dear. <laughs> but got no further, because an electric pencil flew across the cabin and threw the radio's on-off sensitive airspace. What? I don't know. Zaphod turned and glared at Trillian. She had thrown the pencil. Hey, he said. What did you do that for? Trillian was tapping her fingers on a screen of figures. I've just thought of something, she said. Yeah? Worth interrupting a news bulletin about me for? You hear enough about yourself as it is. I'm very insecure. We know that. Can we drop your ego for a moment? This is important. If there's anything more important than my ego around, I want it caught and shot now. Zaphod glared at her, then laughed. Listen, she said. We picked up those couple of guys. What couple of guys? The couple of guys we picked up. Oh yeah, said Zaphod. Those couple of guys. We picked them up in sector ZZ9, plural Z Alpha. Yeah, said Zaphod and blinked. Trillian said quietly, Does that mean anything to you? Hmm, said Zaphod. ZZ9, plural Z Alpha. ZZ9, plural Z Alpha? Well, said Trillian. Uh, what does the Z mean? asked Zaphod. Which one? Anyone. One of the major difficulties Trillian experienced in her relationship with Zaphod was learning to distinguish between him pretending to be stupid just to get people off their guard, pretending to be stupid because he couldn't be bothered to think and wanted someone else to do it for him, pretending to be outrageously stupid to hide the fact that he actually didn't understand what was going on, and really being genuinely stupid. He was renowned for being amazingly clever, and quite clearly was so. But not all the time, which obviously worried him, hence the act. <laughs> kind of sounds like me sometimes. He preferred people to be puzzled. Proffered? I think there's a spelling error there. He preferred people to be puzzled rather than contemptuous. This, above all, appeared to Trillian to be genuinely stupid. But she couldn't... She couldn't. She could no longer be bothered to argue about it. She sighed and punched up a star map on the viviscreen so she could make it simple for him, whatever his reasons for wanting it to be that way were. There, she pointed. Right there. Hey, yeah, said Zaphod. Well, she said. Well, what? Parts of the inside of her head screamed at other parts of the inside of her head. She said very calmly, It's the same sector you originally picked me up in. He looked at her and then looked back at the screen. Hey, yeah, he said. Now that is wild. We should have zapped straight into the middle of that horsehead nebula. How did we come to be there? I mean, that's nowhere. She ignored this. Improbability drive, she said patiently. In <laughs> you know, as someone who does voice acting on the down low. <laughs> mumbling words like improb pr improbability drive really does make me... It upsets me. <laughs> it upsets me greatly. <laughs> she said patiently. You explained it to me yourself. We pass through every point in the universe. You know that. Yeah, but that's one wild coincidence, isn't it? Yes. Picking someone up at that point? Out of the whole of the universe to choose from? That's just too... I want to work this out. Computer. The serious cybernetics computer... The Sirius Cybernetics Corporation shipboard computer, which controlled and permeated every particle of the ship, switched into communication mode. Hi there, it said brightly, and simultaneously spewed out a tiny ribbon of ticker tape, just for the record. The ticker tape said, Hi there. Oh, God, said Zaphod. He hadn't worked with this computer for long, but had already learned to loathe it. The computer continued brash and cheery, as if it was selling detergent. I want you to know that whatever your problem is, I am here to help you solve it. Yeah, yeah, said Zaphod. Look, I think I'll just use a piece of paper. Sure thing, said the computer, spilling out its message into a waste bin at the same time. I understand. If you ever want... Shut up, 
said Zaphod, and snatching up a pencil, sat down next to Trillian at the console. Okay, okay, said the computer in a hurt turn of voice, and closed its speech channel deck. Blech. I'm going to read that entire line again. Okay, okay, said the computer in a hurt tone of voice, and closed down its speech channel again. Zaphod and Trillian pored over the figures that the improbability flight path scanner flashed silently up in front of them. Can we work out, said Zaphod, from their point of view, what the improbability of their rescue was? Yes, that's a constant, said Trillian. Two to the power of 260, no, 200, two to the power of 276,709 to one against. That's high. They're two lucky, lucky guys. Yes, but relative to what we are doing when the ship picked them up, Trillian punched up the figures. They showed two to the power of infinity minus one, an irrational number that only has a conventional meaning in improbability physics. It's pretty low, continued Zaphod with a slight whistle. Yes, agreed Trillian, and looked at him quizzically. That's one big whack of improbability to be counted for. To be counted for? To accounted for. To be accounted. Ugh, goodness me. You really still want me to read this? <laughs> I'm surprised you're not asleep. <laughs> anyway, something pretty improbable has got to show up on the balance sheet if it's all going to add up into a pretty sum. Zaphod scribbled a few sums across them. Sorry, kiddo. My back started acting up there. Uh, I guess I'm old now. <laughs> Where was I? Zaphod scribbled a few sums, crossed them out, and threw the pencil away. That's dots. I can't work it out. Well? Zaphod knocked his two heads together in irritation and gritted his teeth. Okay, he said. Computer. The voice circuit sprang to life again. Why, hello there, they said, ticker tape, ticker tape. All I want to do is make your day nicer and nicer and nicer and nicer. Yeah, well, shut up and work something out for me. Sure thing, chattered the computer. You want a probability forecast based on improbability data, yeah. Okay, the computer continued. I'm going to scroll down here. Here's an interesting little notion. Did you realize that most people's lives are governed by telephone numbers? A pained look crawled across one of Zaphod's faces and onto the other one. Have you flipped? he said. No, but you will when I tell you that... Trillian gasped. She scrabbled at the buttons on the improbability flight path screen. Telephone number, she said. Did that thing say telephone number? Numbers flashed on the screen. The computer had paused politely, but now it continued. What I was about to say is that... Don't bother, please, said Trillian. Look, what is this? said Zaphod. I don't know, said Trillian. But those aliens, they're on the way up to the bridge with that wretched robot. Can we pick them up on any of the monitor's cameras? Well, look at you. <laughs> You're just about ready to pass out, aren't you? No, no, come on. I think it's time you got some sleep, all right? You can sleep here tonight. It's fine. I'm not going to make you move back. You look too comfortable. <laughs> okay. Do you need anything? You need to pee or anything like that? Okay, good. Sleep well, my love. Mm -hmm. We'll play tons of video games tomorrow.